Exponents, negative and zero. Let's start with a quick warm up. You guys try these five exponent problems using exponent rules and laws. Pause the video here, come back, and we'll check and see how you did. All right, welcome back. So on the first one, we have 2g squared times 3g to the fifth. Well, the 2 and 3 are not the same base, so we'd multiply 2 times 3 and get 6. And g squared times g to the 5th, we're multiplying, have the same base, so we would add the exponent, get 6g to the 7th. Then this one, we have power of a power, so this 3 applies to the 2, the 3 applies to the g. Well, when I apply the, the exponent of 3 to the 2, I have 2 times 2 times 2. 3 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. It is not 2 times 3, it's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Then an exponent to an exponent, the power of power rule is where we multiply the exponents, so we get 8g to the 6. Then we have g to the 6 divided by g squared. If we're dividing and have the same base, we would subtract the exponent, 6 minus 2 to get g to the 4th. Then in the upper right-hand corner, we have... 6g to the 5th divided by 22g to the 4th. Well, the number part, the coefficient part, 6 and 22, I would reduce just like we've always reduced fractions. 6 and 22 were both divisible by 2. So that would reduce to 3 elevenths. And the g's, where we have the same base, they would cancel out. And we'd have one extra g left on the top, or you can think about it as subtracting 5 minus 4, and we have that g left on the top. So 3g over 11. Now, this bottom one has a couple different rules um, all wrapped into one problem. I'd first start with simplifying the numerator. g to the 6 times g squared. We're multiplying and have the same base. We would add and get g to the 8th. Then g to the 8th divided by g to the 5th. We're dividing and have the same base. We'd subtract the exponent and get g to the 3rd. All right, so let's move on. We have Today we have the law of negative exponents. And the law of negative exponents says that a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the nth. So by taking the base and the exponent and dropping it to the denominator, it will switch the sign of the exponent from negative to positive. For example, if we had 10 to the negative fifth power, the law of negative exponents says that is equal to 1 over 10 to the fifth. So notice how the base stayed the same. We stayed with 10, we stayed with a, but by dropping it to the denominator, the exponent, the sign of the exponent switched from negative to positive. So a couple of different ways we could say that. So a negative exponent makes you take the reciprocal of the base first. This will turn the expression into one with a positive exponent. Or you could think of it as a negative exponent just means that the base is on the wrong side of the fraction line. So you need to flip the base to the other side. Still showing the same rules we just looked at. So let's say we have a problem like this. It says express using positive exponents. We have a, b to the negative 3 power. Now, does that negative 3 apply to the a, the b, or both? Well, because it's not in parentheses, this negative 3 only applies to the b. So a still has a positive 1 for an exponent. So to express using a positive exponent, the a stays in place. It has a positive 1 for an exponent. But to make the b have a positive exponent, I would have to drop it to the denominator and have a over b to the third. Let's look at a new one. Say so we have x to the third divided by x to the six. So if we're dividing and have the same base, we would subtract exponents. So I have three minus six. X to the three minus six. Three minus six is negative three. So x to the negative three power. And the law of negative exponents says x to the negative three power is equal to one over x to the third. What if we have a negative exponent on the numerator and a negative exponent in the denominator? Well, to make this c have a positive exponent, I would drop the base and the exponent to the denominator, making it c to the positive third. And d to the negative 4, I'm actually going to bring it up. I'm going to switch from the denominator to the numerator. We'll switch the sign of the exponent. 
So if it starts in the numerator, to make it have a positive exponent, you drop it to the denominator, we'll flip the sign. If it starts in the denominator, I take that base and the exponent, bring it to the numerator, we'll switch the sign from negative 4 to positive 4. Right. Let's look at this one. We have expressed using positive exponents, a to the negative 2 times b times c over a to the third. Well, I only have one negative exponent to really deal with. I have this a to the negative 2. To make it a to the positive 2, I'd bring it down to the denominator. Well, I already have the denominator of a to the third, which is a times a times a. And if I bring down a squared, or a times a, I now have a being multiplied five times to the denominator, so I have bc over a to the fifth. So this a to the squared came down, there was already three a's there, and now I have a being multiplied five times in the denominator. There were three there, and we brought down two more, so we have a to the fifth. And that b and c with a positive one for an exponent just stayed in the numerator, didn't need to move anything or do anything with that. All right, let's say we have a little harder one. We have x to the 6, y to the negative 2, z over x to the negative 3, y. So I have a couple different negative exponents to deal with. So let's first look at the y. So this y to the negative 2, to make it positive 2, I'd have to bring it to the denominator. Well, how many y's are already in the denominator? Well, y to the 1, or there's one y in the denominator. If I bring down two y's, then I'm going to have y to the third in the denominator. Now let's look at these x's. I have an x to the negative 3 in the denominator. And to make it have a positive x, I need to bring it up. I need to bring it to the numerator. There are six x's being multiplied that are positive in the numerator already. I'm going to bring up three more. So when I bring up those three and have six there, I would have x being multiplied nine times in the numerator. Then that z to the first power is a positive exponent, so it could just stay there. I don't need to do anything with it. And my answer would be x to the ninth z over y to the third. Now, anything with an exponent of 1 is just itself. a to the 1 is a. x to the 1 is x. 3a to the 1 power is 3a. 8 to the 1 is 8 y to the 1 is y, and 1 over 2a all to the first power is 1 over 2a. So anything to the 1 power is itself. Now, anything to the 0 power is 1, like a to the 0 is 1, 1 over 2a in parentheses to the 0 power is 1, 3a in parentheses to the 0 power is 1. Now, in this case, 0 applies to the 3 and the a. Here we have 3a to the 0, which equals 3. Well, why does 3a to the 0 equal 3 here? 3a to the 0 up here equals 1. Well, up here, the 0 applies to everything in the parentheses. Down here, the 0 only applies to the a. It does not apply to the 3. So I'd have 3 times 1, which is 3. So if 0 applies to everything, it is 1, but it doesn't always apply to everything. You've got to make sure to see what it applies to and what it doesn't. We have some negative base rules you run into, and these always cause people problems. So let's look at a couple examples real quick so we can differentiate. Negative 5 squared would be negative 5 times 5 times negative 1. Negative 1 times 5 times 5, which is negative 25. Now, if I had the negative 5 in parentheses, negative 5 squared would be negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25. So inside the parentheses, the negative stays with the number as negative 5 times negative 5. Without the parentheses, you have negative 1 times 5 times 5. Completely different answer. So you've got to see if it's inside parentheses with a negative sign, the negative will stay with the number. All right. You guys pause the video here, try these four questions, we'll come back and check. All right, 3 to the negative 2, if we're evaluating the expression, we'd have 1 over 3 squared. I don't want to multiply anything out until I have a positive exponent. So first take care of that negative exponent rule before you start multiplying things. And then 1 over 3 squared is equivalent to 1 over 3 times 3, which is 1 ninth. Down here we have all of this raised to the zero power. Well, zero applies to everything, so we just get one. 
up here on the top right, look at the coefficient part, the 2 and 4. 2 and 4 will reduce to 1 half. Then the x's are both positive exponents, so we could just cancel. Are there more x's on the top or the bottom? Bottom. How many more? 2. So we get x squared in the denominator. The y has a negative exponent on the top, so to make this have a positive exponent, I would need to bring it to the bottom to make that from a negative 4 to a positive 4. There's already two positive y's being multiplied in the bottom. I bring down 4, I get y to the 6. So I have 1 over 2x squared y to the 6. Now, negative 2 to the negative 5 power, before I multiply anything, I want to make that a positive exponent, so I'd have 1 over negative 2 to the 5th. This messes a lot of people up. They think they need to change something on the base when they drop this down. It doesn't matter if it's a variable, a whole number, a negative number. The base part stays the same. Then we can multiply out negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Well, when we have a negative multiplied an odd amount of times, we end up with a negative answer. So we have 1 over negative 32. One last one, a little bit harder of a problem. You've seen a lot of testing. Let's say Bobby simplified the expression below. His final answer is in the form am, bm, b to the n, a to the m, b to the n. If he simplified the expression correctly, what is the value of n, the exponent of b? So we're looking for what this number is. Well, if I multiply and have the same base, I would add the exponent. So a to the 4 and negative 2, if I add 4 plus negative 2, I get a squared. So the m is 2, but that's not what they're asking for. They're asking for this and the exponent on the b. If I multiply and have the same base b, I would add the exponent negative 5 and negative 3 and get negative 8. So the value of n is negative 8. I hope that helps you guys with exponents negative and zero. Have a great day.